California, we bring you Gene Herschel in a new Dr. Christian story called Stuff of Heroes. Presented for your enjoyment by the Cheese Bro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline, and producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other Vaseline specialties. For our first feature tonight, we want you to hear this interesting experience of one of our good customers. I'm a part-time worker, and my job keeps me away from home three days a week. So on those days, my two small sons are on their own. But I never worry, because Dick and Dave are as self-reliant as many boys lots older. For one thing, when they get small cuts, burns, scratches, and other minor injuries, they know just what to do. I keep a jar of Vaseline jelly where they can get at it easily and take care of these small injuries themselves. Vaseline jelly has so many other uses, too. I don't know how I'd get along without it. There are very few people in the whole country who get along without Vaseline jelly. For this amazingly popular medicant is in more than nine out of ten homes throughout the United States. People everywhere use Vaseline jelly for all kinds of minor skin injuries and irritations because it does these three important things. First, Vaseline jelly forms a protective film that helps keep infection out when the skin is broken. Second, it soothes irritation and promotes rapid healing. Third, it softens and lubricates the skin by supplementing the natural oils. If your supply of Vaseline jelly is running low, be sure to get some more tomorrow. A generous jar or tube costs only 10 cents at any drugstore. Well, here we are all back again in Hollywood after several gala weeks in New York. But both Jean Herschold, our star, and Rosemary DeCamp, who plays Dr. Christian's secretary, tell me it's mighty nice to be back in the hometown. Oh, yes, Hollywood is hometown to a lot of us. And so to celebrate, we have an extra good story tonight. Other artists featured in tonight's cast are Ned Lefevre as Hank Blevins, handyman at the hospital, Jerry Hausner as Luke Blevins, his brother, and Noreen Gamil as a Chicago landlady. The curtain is rising now, and the scene is Dr. Christian's private office at the hospital. Dr. Christian is in serious conversation with Hank Blevins, the official hired man of the institution. They are talking about Hank's brother, Luke. Now, uh, what did Luke do with the $100 he took from the store, Hank? He, he gambled, Dr. Christian. Luke's a great gambler, Luke is. Many's the time he come home with his pockets bulging. But this time, he lost, huh? I mean, he's been having a losing streak. That's how he got in so deep. He kept taking a little bit more and a little bit more, thinking he'd make a killing and pay it all back. Yeah, I've heard that story before. Dr. Christian, I know you're awful disgusted with Luke, but if you just help him this one time more, for Ma's sake, this will about kill Ma. No, Hank. No, I can't do it. And to get Luke out of this scrape wouldn't really be helping him. You've been soft with your brother. Easy. Let him get away with things till he's... Well, till he's got the idea he can always do it. Luke's a hard fella to stand up to, Doc. I know, but you've got to fight for things you believe in. It takes courage. And I ain't no hero, Doc. Well, you'll have to be, Hank. If you're going to straighten out a person like Luke, you'll have to be made of sterner stuff. I guess it ain't in me. Luke always is in such a lot of hot water. Dr. Christian, if you just... I'm sorry, Hank. I haven't time to talk to you about it any longer just now. Dr. Christian, uh, Miss Harris wants to know if you'll see Mrs. Perkins before she goes. She's had a radium treatment. Hello, Hank. Hello, Miss Judy. Thanks for the flowers on my desk. The nurse has told me you brought them in. I'm glad you liked them. Well, I suppose... Oh, gee, Dr. Christian, you don't want to reconsider, do you, Doc? Hank, you're a good man and a faithful employee. I'd do anything I could to help you, but... Well, this time you're asking the impossible. Am I? Well, then... Oh, gee whiz, gosh, Dr. Christian, then what am I going to do? What'll I tell Luke? Did Luke send you to ask me this? Yes. Oh, but I mean, no, no, Luke never had nothing to do with it, Doc. He don't know I came. But, uh, he don't know. Oh, well, never mind, Hank. My answer is no, just the same. Dr. Christian, please. Yes, Judy, I'm coming. I'll be up as soon as I put this away. Gosh. Look, Hank, move this pile of books for me, will you? I want to get into the safe. What's that you got, Miss Judy? That's medicine, Hank. Funny medicine that you've got to keep locked up. Afraid it's going to run away or something, that you keep it in the safe. 
It's a very special kind of a medicine and a special kind of a safe, Hank. You see, this is radium, and even a tiny bit of it is worth a fortune. Ain't you going to lock the safe? No, I only lock it at night. I don't think anybody around here is going to steal radium. No. Everybody around here is pretty honest, I guess. Mm. Miss Judy, I'd, I'd like to talk to you. What about Hank? Miss Judy, I got a problem. Do you... Do you think I ain't got courage? Uh, oh, goodness, there's my signal. I'm sorry, Hank. I'll talk to you later. Gosh. What? Shut up, you fool. You want somebody to hear you? Luke. Gee, where are you? Here, in the bushes, outside the window. Oh, gee, Luke, listen. You better get away from there before somebody sees you. Shut up. You listen to me. What's this radium stuff Judy was talking about that's so expensive? I don't know. It's just radium. What's it look like? Search me. It was in kind of a tube. Oh, must be valuable if they keep it in the safe. Sure, it's valuable. The safe ain't locked. I heard Judy say so. And ain't that a piece of luck? What do you mean, luck? Listen, dope. You're going to lift that radium. Lift it? Sure, crib it, palm it, steal it, you bonehead. Well, I ain't going to steal anything. Uh, that's where you're wrong. Now, listen, Hank. Doc turned you down, didn't he? And he was our last chance. Now, if I don't get the money, I go to jail and I serve a stretch. You know what that'll do to Ma, don't you? Yes, but... But you want your own brother in jail? No, of course I don't. Well, then we got to get the money. Now, this radium is worth plenty, enough to get me out of this jam and then some buy things for you and me and Mom. But it ain't ours. Oh, nobody will ever suspect you in a thousand years, Hank. You're right, they won't, because I ain't no thief. Of course you ain't. This is something you're going to do, you know, noble-like, just to save me. No. Oh, I'll never ask a thing of you again, Hank, and I'll make a solemn promise. I'll go straight from now on. Honest to goodness? Sure. And then there's Ma. You're always saying how much you think of Ma. Here you can keep her from ever knowing about the store. And you can give her a lot of swell presents, too. And you're hedging. I ain't hedging. I... Well, you gotta do it, Hank, for Ma's sake. Oh, gosh, how can you I? You just do it. You open the safe door and you take it. Luke, I... Take it. No. Oh, all the blither... Unfasten that screen. What for? Never mind what for. Unhook it. Uh, I don't see what for. All right, hold it open. I'm coming in. Coming in? Well, what for? You'll see. <laughs> Ah, where is this safe? Oh. Oh, is is that the radium in that dinky little box? Yes, but, but Luke... Ah, uh, I can carry that in my vest pocket. Christian, I'm not mistaken. I brought it back and I put it right there on the shelf. Hank saw me do it, didn't you, Hank? Why, I guess I did. Yes, I guess so. You sure had something in your hand. You saw Judy go to the safe, Hank? Yes, I saw her. Yes. And then Judy... Well, what? then your buzzer sounded and I went upstairs. And when I came down again, just a few minutes ago, to lock the safe for the night, the tube was gone. Dr. Christian, the radium's been stolen. Yeah, it looks that way, Judy. Oh, what do we do? I don't know. Oh, I'm going to call the police. No, I... wait, wait. Not yet. I want to think. Hank, where were you while this was happening? Me? Well, I was trimming the hedge, Dr. Christian, like you told me to. All the time? All except the time I was, I was out in the tool shed fixing the screen. What screen? That one. The wire was was coming sort of loose, and I saw all those flies out there, and I remembered what you always say about flies in a hospital, and so... And so you took it out and fixed it? Yes, that's right. And, uh, well, did you leave the window open while you were in the tool shed? Or, yes. Yes, that's what I did, Doc. Oh, Hank. You, uh, you didn't see anybody around when you came to put it back, did you? No. No, I didn't. The shrubbery here under the window looks as though somebody crashed through it. They might have come in the window while the screen was out. Yes, they might. Oh, I'll never forgive myself, Dr. Christian. Oh, it's taken you years to get money enough to buy that radium so you could give treatments here in River's End. Oh, where will we get another $3,000? $3,000? Is that what it costs? Yes. 
What did you think it was worth, Hank? Why, well, I, I, I knew it was worth a lot, but $3,000. And if the thief realized what he has taken, he'd give twice that to be rid of it. Wh- what do you mean? I mean, radium is a very dangerous thing. Dangerous? Of course. Why do you suppose we kept it locked up here in a special container and all? So as to keep it safe. Now, that container is made of platinum. And the safe is lined with lead. We were trying to keep the radium in, not to keep the thieves out. If the thief knew anything about radium, he'd know he couldn't dispose of it after he'd stolen it. You mean nobody will buy it? Oh, of course not. Radium is registered. Registered? Yes. No one in the market for radium would buy that tube until it was identified. But... Oh, gosh, wouldn't they? No one. If the thief himself should try to open the tube, well... What? What had happened to him? Hank, did you ever hear of a radium burn? Radium burn? You mean it... it burn? Yes, yes, that's just what I mean. Inexperienced people who fool with it are very likely to lose their fingers. Oh, gosh, Doc. And my one hope is when he finds he can't dispose of it, He'll return it to us without opening the container. Oh, a thief wouldn't do that. No, he might. If it was useless to him, and if he realized how valuable it was to the sick and the suffering people in River's End. Doc, uh, I don't get it. That radium is worth $3,000 to us, Hank. But it isn't worth a cent to a thief. Oh. Dr. Christian, could I go home now? Yes, Hank. But the police may want to ask questions. Even. Oh, they won't need Hank. He can go along if he wants to. Thanks. Dr. Christian, I don't understand you. Our radium's stolen. Our patients can't have any more treatment here in River's End. Terrible things may happen to the people who got hold of that tube. Innocent people might not know what it was or that it was stolen. And we just sit here and do nothing. It's a pretty bad situation, isn't it, Judy? Bad? Why, it's... Tragic. It's, it's horrible. Well, what do you think we should do? I think we should warn everybody what a dangerous thing has been stolen and protect people. And the thief will throw it in the river. We sacrifice our patients. People who can't go anywhere else. Mrs. Perkins, Claire Jones, the little Howl boy. Oh, well, I suppose we do. Well, we've got to do something to get it back. You're doing the one thing that may possibly get it back for us. What? You're waiting. Waiting for what? Perhaps we're waiting for a man's better nature to triumph. Perhaps we're waiting for a coward to turn into a hero. I don't understand. You, you've got some sort of an idea, haven't you? Do, Dr. Christian, you, you don't think Hank... I don't know, Judy. That's why I'm waiting. Oh, Hank's pretty dumb. He's weak, but he, he's honest. You, you do think he's honest, don't you? Don't you? Oh, you heard Hank's reason for having the screen off the window, didn't you? Yes. And you heard him say the window was open all the time he was fixing it. Yes. Well? Well? Judy, there isn't a fly in the room. Open the door. Well, what do you want? Come in here at this time of night. I want to see my brother. Your brother? Who's your brother? Luke Blevins. I was here in Chicago staying with him for a while last summer, remember? What's that got to do with now? Well, Luke's here now, and I know it. Don't quit arguing, lady. I'm in a hurry. If Luke ain't in his old room, you better tell me quick. He's he's there, but I don't want any trouble. Then you go back to bed and forget it, missus. Ma always said what a body didn't know couldn't hurt him. This is the door, ain't it? You go along now. Good night. Now, see that you're quiet. And tell your brother. The next time he expects visitors at this time of the night, he'd better let me know. Uh, huh? Open the door. Who is it? Me. Hank. Hurry up. Hank. 
What are you doing here? I came to find you. But uh, how, how'd you know where? You said you was coming to Chicago. I figured you'd stay here, same as you always but, do. But how, how'd you get here? Hopped to freight. Well, I'll be... What time is it? Most morning. Listen, Luke. I gotta start right back. Give me that radium stuff quick. What? I said give me the radium. Keep your voice down, can't you? You want everybody in the house to hear? You don't care if they do. Give me that tube, Luke. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that tube of radium you stole out of Doc Christian's Shh, safe. For the love of my... I ain't shushing, see? Give it to me. I gotta be going. Hey, are you crazy? No. Listen, Luke. That radium you took is worth more than $3,000. Not bad, huh? Well, uh, what do you want? A split? No. I'm going to take it back. Take it back? Might as well let me, Luke. You can't sell it. It's registered or something. Uh, nobody can buy it. Ah, Doc told you that, and you were chump enough to believe it. It's so. Luke, that stuff's sort of, sort of like magic. It helps the folks that need help, them, but it's fierce on folks that try to steal it. it it burns them up. Burns them up? Hey, what are you giving me? It's a fact. Their radium's no good to you, and it's worth everything in the world to the folks that are sick. Give it here, Luke. You crazy dumbbell. I got a fortune in my vest pocket, and you say give it here. Now, get out of here. Get out before I take a good swing at you. Oh, no, you wouldn't do oh, that, no? Luke. Well, we're blood brothers. I'm just trying to help trying you. Trying to help? Scram, do you hear? Scram. Get on a train for River's End, and don't you dare open your mouth. Sure. Soon as you give me that tube. Get out. Get out or I'll suck you. I don't think you'd better. Mm. Oh, gee, Luke, I wish you wouldn't act this way. Oh, I don't want to have to hit you, Luke, but you're making me do it. Uh, you give up? No. Well, you can't say I, I didn't warn you. Hey, Luke. I didn't mean to knock you clear out. But I told you. Here, I'll put you on the bed. There. You'll feel better pretty soon. And you can come home and behave yourself. Now, where's that tube? I gotta catch that train for River's End. Don't get excited, Judy. Don't get excited. When I know the place is, is haunted. Oh, now, Judy. Well, how else do you account for it? I, I came in this morning, I straightened your desk, and I put those new books on the shelves and opened the safe just to look despairingly at the place where the tube of radium used to be. Yes. And there it was. Well? And now you say don't get excited. I don't see why you should. But, Dr. Christian, the radium's back. So you said. The tube's right there in front of our eyes. Dr. Christian, where did it come from? Did Hank... Shh. Oh, but I simply can't bear not to know. Did he did he repent or did he just scare him into it? I never thought Hank took it. Oh, but you said it is better nature would Judy, I know I don't need to ask you whether you kept your promise to me last night. Oh, of course I did. I didn't tell a soul. Not even Roy. Well, then no one knows that the wagon was ever missing, except you and me and And the thief. Yes. So let's just keep it our secret office, Judy, will you? What a thing to ask of a woman. <laughs> All right, I will, Dr. Christian. I'll probably die of curiosity, but you're always right. Mm, I wish I were. This time I'd better be. Morning, Dr. Christian. Morning, Miss Judy. Oh, good morning, Hank. How are you? Oh, I'm fair to Midland. Hank, for goodness sakes, where'd you get that black eye? Oh, what black eye, Miss Judy? Oh, you mean... Yes, that one. Where a gentleman always gets a black eye, Judy... Hank right into a door in the dark. <laughs> oh, no, Dr. Christian, I... <laughs> Why, yes, I did, too. How did you know that was the way I got it, Doc? Oh, I'm a black eye specialist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Judy, these records go back to Miss Harris. Oh, uh, I'll take them right up to her. Fine. Well, you better come out to the clinic and get a compress on that shiner, Hank. Dr. Christian, you're a marvel. Hmm. 
What's she mean, Doc? Just Judy's little tribute to my powers of perception. Oh. Well, Doc. Doc, did you... Is everything... Hank, you'll be amazed to know that Judy found the tube of radium we missed last night. What? Yeah, she, she must have misplaced it. Anyhow, it's back where it belongs. See? Gee, many Christmas. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> well, well, I'm glad you found it, Doc. Yes, yes, we're glad to. You, uh, you were very helpful last night, Hank. We, we appreciate your, your interest very much. Oh, that was all right. Dr. Chris, great jumping grasshoppers, Doc. Will you look at that eye? I would noticed it, Hank. I've been so busy, I ain't had time to look in a mirror before. I guess I might as well tell you the truth about it, Doc. That ain't no bump off a door. You don't need to tell me anything about it, Hank, I know. Well, how could you? I just looked at the evidence. You see, men with shiners like that one, Hank, have the stuff that heroes are made of. Honest, Doc? Well, that was what you said I needed, wasn't it? Doc. That eye really is a picherino, ain't it? <laughs> yes, Hank. I'd say it was. A perfect picherino. <laughs> Dr. Christian, alias Gene Hersholt, will be here at the microphone to tell you about next week's story. Meanwhile, my parting message about the products that make the program possible is this. Of course, every woman knows what wonders an oil shampoo can do for her hair, how soft and lustrous and healthy looking it is afterwards. But did you ever realize how easy it is to give yourself one of these beneficial hot oil treatments in your own home? It's easy with Vaseline hair tonic. Now, here's all you have to do. First, rub plenty of Vaseline hair tonic on your scalp. Then wring a towel out of piping hot water and wrap it around your head. When it begins to cool, repeat the process. And then give yourself a good shampoo. When you see the happy result, you'll be giving yourself a Vaseline hair tonic treatment before every shampoo. For your hair will be softer, more flattering, easy to manage. And if you're troubled with loose dandruff, You'll find that those unsightly dandruff scales will disappear with regular Vaseline hair tonic treatments. Vaseline hair tonic counteracts dry scalp conditions because it supplements the natural oils of the scalp. And you'll find Vaseline hair tonic amazingly inexpensive. A 40-cent bottle of it will last for several treatments. Get one at your druggist tomorrow and see how beautiful your hair can look. And now, here is Jean Hersholt as Dr. Christian. Oh, that was a swell story tonight, Dr. Detective. What kind of a story have you selected for us for next week? Well, Art, our excitement follows right one after another in our village, and so my story next week has to do with two young strangers who have been staying here in River's End. There's been a good deal of mystery about them, but it'll all be solved for you next Wednesday night at the same hour. So until then, I'll say good night. <laughs> Arthur Gilmore speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.